Morning, everybody. Morning. Well, call the meeting to order. Of course, it's the approval of agenda and order of business. And I, there's an error in one of our motions. Uh, yeah, a motion to, to cancel the June 6th council meeting. So we have to deal with that. A uh, new date for a public hearing. We have to set a new date for a public hearing, which we are going to hold today. Uh, Tina wants to report on the Social or Public Library Committee report. And in public input, I have Barry Redman, who's made a request to, for public input. Yes, Floyd? No legal time you for that. Never moved away. <laughs> Anything else? Somebody want to move the appropriate as amended? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. Good to see everybody's back today. <laughs> Sunny Southern people return to a rather miserable weekend. So, public input, Barry Redman. I'm Barry Redmond, I'm sure you're familiar with me by now, 4020 Highway Number 3. I live uh, on the first house past the train station as you go over the village on the right hand side, in case you want to throw some rocks on the way by. Uh, oh, you've been there a long time. Yeah. And, and, anyway, I'm a proud resident of uh, Chester and uh, being at the meeting last last week, I was pretty upset at some of the stuff that was is going on with the uh, all the talk of uh, new administration building, public works, and all this kind of thing, uh, and some of the comments and suggestions. Sort of, we're supposed to be a municipality. For municipality to work. You have to listen to the individual districts because each district only has one vote. So the thing is, Chester is quite different than the other districts. I'm not saying we're better, we're different. We have a lot of different needs and there's a lot of things going on here that don't go on in the other districts. Been to a lot of meetings over the last number of years and these bylaw meetings and all the stuff that's going on and the same things keep coming up over and over again from the people of Chester what we want and how we want to uh, progress at a slower pace and to the abilities that we have with water issues and, and whatever population and I guess the thing that really disturbed me last week was the suggestion that public works be considered to be put at the old fire hall uh, when that becomes available. Now to me, that really suggests that you're not listening because everything about that to put a building of that kind of operation in the core of our village, in the center of our historic area and residential area, is exactly the kind of thing we do not want and we do not need. Public works does not need to be linked up with the other. It can be easily separated. It is a separate operation. There's a lot more hands-on stuff going on there. So I'd like you to start listening to what the people of Chester have to say. And in order to do that, you have to start going to some of the meetings. Like, I can count the number of councillors that have been to any of the bylaw meetings 
the public bylaw meetings, probably on half of one hand. But you're going to make the decisions for us. It just doesn't make any sense. So I'm just going to repeat some of the things that we really don't want. You know? We don't want final siding. We don't want railway storage units. We don't want Chester to be an RV parking lot. That's what we had Graves Island for. We don't want streets with rows of duplexes, triplexes, or whatever number of plexes you desire all in a row. We have a rule that only one multi-unit development be permitted with a certain distance of each other. Right now we have that. Keep it. We don't want rows of triplexes. We don't want our building height restrictions to be allowed to creep higher because an existing building is higher than the, than the new one that is going up. And we want a say on architectural restrictions. And if you're listening at all, we don't want a, ma um, a mega new administration and public work complex in the core of our village. So I'm just going to finish off with a email I got this morning from Peggy Wilson, who's traveling now, but she took time out to say this. And currently not in Chester, but it has come to my attention that there has been some discussion on moving the Public Works Department to the existing fire hall on Central Street once that land becomes vacant. I know it was only a mention and that sort of thing. But, uh, please tell me that this is not a, uh, not a real possibility. Over the 37 years that I have been a resident of Chester, I have witnessed, my, my, I witnessed many blunders and mistakes that council past and present have made. But this will absolutely uh, be the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. So many people have tried so hard to make that area of Chester stand out as an historic part of the village with the churches, the Zoe Valley Library, our historic tower, and Lordly House. And now you want to destroy that as well as the remaining part of Central Street by moving Public Works Department to the middle? The residents of Chester are fighting tooth and nail to conserve this area, protect any residents in this area, and the village as a whole, while you and the remaining members of council do everything in your power to destroy it. At the, minutes, at the uh, municipality's uh, stationary pamphlet, online sites and presenta presentations by all departments state at the bottom of each page that Chester is Nova Scotia's treasure. Please, as the council for District 3 and a resident of this village, Please stand up for us and say no to this. Regards, Peggy Wilson. Anyway, that summed that part up better than I could. And uh, just please start listening to us Thank so we don't have to go in other directions. Thank you. Okay. So we're on to the minutes of the previous meeting, and that's the one that needs to be corrected to. Uh, <laughs> to eliminate the June 6th meeting. I don't know if there are any other errors or omissions. Somebody want to move that amendment? I'll move that. Can you make that amendment? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motions carried. Okay, proclamations. Remember to flag application of proclamation request Gaelic, Nova Scotia. Anybody have an issue with that? No, I'm going to move we approve the proclamation. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Motions carried. 
Well, there is mm -hmm. a flag request there too. No. A, a request to, to fly the flag as well that needs to be approved. No, I thought we did that flag application and proclamation. We're doing both in one. Okay. One. There you go. Yeah. Fighter point two, remember the flag application, Lunenburg Pride Month. Does anybody have an issue with that? No, I'll move we approve that application. Second that motion. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Mm -hmm. oh, Carry. And then 5.3, light up for Lyme Disease Awareness Month and proclamation request. Do we have a problem with that one? No. I move that we proclamate Lyme Disease Awareness Month. Second. Discussion? Do we normally light up the building or raise the flag? I think we do so. In some situations, yeah, we do both. Okay. Okay. Oh, we get both. All those in favor? Opposed? Motions carried. Committee, the whole labor force. There were no motions requiring approval, so that makes that simple. So we're going to have one for Gaelic and the Scotia Month as well. We already did that. We did that one? Yeah. 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 First, yeah, I think. That was first one, okay. Yeah. For 6.1, oh, we don't need to do anything. Yeah. No. No. 6.2, Lunarburg County Senior Safety Monthly Report. Thank you. So when I sat down, I realized I forgot my notes for my two community courts. So social public library should be interesting. I'll try to go by memory when we get to that one. So the uh, Lunar County Senior Safety Program, the two monthly reports are included in your package. Again, I was a bit slack a month ago. <coughs> Didn't get the February one in, um, so I'm including both this time. You've had them for a bit now, so if there are any questions on that. Again, I always say now business as usual, I think, in terms yeah. of the stats. Uh, you know, again, each of us as municipal units are very engaged in terms of across the county, the towns, the rural areas, the numbers, and so on. So it's it's pretty much, um, again, business as usual across the whole county. Uh, I was happy to see the article, and that's included here. Thank you, Pam, for including that in the package in the South Shore um, Breaker you know, last week, I guess, or a week ago, on the Wednesday when it comes out, the article that was submitted by one of the staff, and um, it was picked up, so that was nice to see, included in the happy cheer. So, actually, I do have um, something special to ask in terms of social uh, the, uh, the partnership. Typically, as part of our annual budgeted line items, groups either come in and or give a written update, annual report, and so on. I believe last year um, the chair and the new staff came in, just so we could put a face to the name. But we recognize the fact that her time, again, as everybody's time, is so valuable in terms of getting out there and doing the visits versus spending the time doing the colorful PowerPoint and, and getting in here in front of council. So what we are doing is we're reaching out to each of the municipal units to see if the four or five or six page annual report Report, written annual report would suffice for this council, again that's my job for this council, to see if that would suffice, suffice as part of the annual reporting requirements, at least for this year, maybe next year if there's new people sitting around the table. If that would be the will of council or the acceptance of council, I do have that with me at home and I will submit that to Pam for inclusion in the package as we move forward in the budget deliberation. It would work for me, that's all I can say. Okay, thank you very much. I will report that back to the group, and they will be happy to hear um, that from this municipal unit, and hopefully the other four, too. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. That's that committee report. If anyone has any questions. Okay. Thank you. So, Social Public Library. So, uh, at the last meeting, uh, which I missed because I had fire advisory committee, uh, we approved, as a board of directors, our budget for the 24-25 Mm -hmm. I would have, of course, received that as a member ahead, I'm trying to find it here, I would have received that ahead of schedule in terms of if I would have had any concerns or questions and so on and the like. 
again, um, pretty much on pretty much uh, the same as last year in terms of totality of the budget, uh, give or take, 1.42% uh, our budget went up. So last year, the budget for Social Public Library was, um, I'm trying to the right column, uh, 1, comma, 279, comma, 926. So 1,279,000 soon. Money. This year it's 1.898 comma two, so it's it's up. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, up 1.42 percent or two percent. Um, we no changes. Um, we are doing an internal um, <coughs> staff position um, and classification review internally. We've done the, the job um, descriptions. I mentioned that a couple of times here. So we've gone through and done all the job descriptions clean up, now we're doing the salary and the positioning and the matching up and so on as a library. Not as board members intimately, but we have a, um, a consultant doing that. So, budget approved, business as usual, nothing to scare you, just report. Don't need approval on the budget necessarily because of the fact that it's uh, one of our mandatory expenses. I, I don't think I forgot anything that I wanted to say. So. Okay. Any yeah. questions? Oh. Thank you. Fine job, Chief. You would have paid. Oh, the salt water article. You already mentioned all Sorry, yes, thank you. Yeah. The students aren't here yet? No. We're just to see if they're here. Okay, let's deal with the new date for the public hearing. What's the suggested date? Anybody have one? Paul, do you have a suggested date for the public hearing? Oh, sorry. Um, May 16th. May 16th? Well, mm -hmm. anybody got a big problem with that? What time would it be? What time would it be? Just before. Yeah, just before the council meeting. Okay, somebody want to move? We set that as a public hearing date. May 16th. Just maybe just for the record, what? Tom, go. I'll pick on this one. Talk on this one is the twin rivers. People may want to know. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Somebody want to move? <laughs> Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Okay. So we'll go to 8.1, I guess. The second point of notice amendment of the Council and Committee of Procedural Policy, changing the term of that before four one year terms. This would be. Final letters. Somebody want to move that it will be approved. Seconder. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Motions carried. <coughs> okay, I guess we get to Brian. Brian, Brian. Is it Brian that's doing your thing on the, the movie? The movie? Brian. Okay, Brian, you come tell us about it before we know anyway. <laughs> Fred, you're going to be staring in the picture. <laughs> Fred, you got a party in the picture? <laughs> Leading man, right? Why they did it. I'm ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, a lot of this they're working through with uh, local businesses and uh, residents. Uh, uh, they're looking at uh, April 17th, 18th, 19th. 25th, 26th, and 29th. There's three different locations. Uh, they're generally looking at 2 p.m. to 2 a.m., which is a little late, of course, but uh, I think it's generally in case they need it, right? But they want to, you know, ensure that they're allowed to do that. Again, they've been talking with everybody. It uh, seems very positive, the feedback we've had. Uh, Brian was also around the area speaking with people and it seems to confirm that it's a go on that end. Uh, it's a Holy Father of the Bride and uh, the locations that they've chosen, it's all attended barricades, local traffic only. They've been in touch with the Chester Playhouse for their time so they're not interfering and uh, they seem uh, pretty on the ball with it and again, you know, 
if council is in favor of it, then I'll, well, I'll let the Department of Transportation know, and then they would uh, yeah. issue the permits with conditions, right? Yeah. There. So they need to know for soon. Yes, with I'm wanting to start on the 17th. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I've heard not, nothing negative. And the staff, I spoke with Brian, he said they were generally speaking positive, and yeah. he was impressed that uh, the movie people had also been able to see all these people too, to discuss any issues they may have. Yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard anything negative. Yeah, I'm sure it's not, I mean, they've dealt with this before the movie company, so they're, yeah. you know, they just don't, this isn't the first, their first rodeo. Yeah, it's not like, yeah. You know it's classified as construction. Yeah. And there's no really heavy construction going on or anything. So, is there a motion required? Yes, we would need a motion to indicate to the Department of Transport that the board in favor. So, second discussion. All those in favor? Oh, right. Yeah, because they would they wouldn't allow it. We yeah. proposed. All right. Or something said. <laughs> Still no kids? They're out there. Bring them on in. Let's do something fun. Okay. Says the cat calls the pigeons. Says the pot's on the cat. Can you imagine? Very well. Sort of coming? They're trickling in. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, you should probably turn on the mics for the benefit of the people in the yeah. gallery. Uh, each person has to put on their own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're already on. They're they're on. on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're nice. They include here, for sure. For the speakers. Yeah. Oh, for the speakers. Well, when Gina speaks, I'm like, you heard my comments. She's a low talker. So she I don't know, unless Tosi gets wound up, then he gets a little loud. I'm saying you're not going to be. All right, so that'll be a couple minutes, so if there's something. There's going to be a couple minutes? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and we don't know much about it. It's just what's contained in a letter at this point. There is a meeting scheduled uh, Friday, and I think it's NSF Amber Department. I'm not sure if it's the NSF Amber Department. Department is holding a meeting this this Friday, so we we may know more. Yeah, and I think uh, as I read, uh, I couldn't help but think it, it, it tied into our Remo discussion. It all does. It, it is as to and, and basically they're saying you know that. Every community knows their community. They didn't say it that way, but they're, they're you know, they want to, and they mentioned firefighters, and, you know, uh, yeah. I don't know why they had to, have to come to that conclusion, but uh, that, I think it's a good move. Uh, I mean, I always thought that that, that uh, emergency starts right in the community with, 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 with us as counselors, with first responders, uh, and it's always good to have a coordinator, I guess, but... Uh, yeah, I don't think they said we should have. Yeah. No, I know they didn't, but uh, everybody knows the way I feel about it. Yeah, but, anyway. Anyway, we'll know yes. more after that meeting on Friday. And then we have a letter from the uh, same follow yeah. on service exchange, a memorandum of understanding. Yeah, so this is just notifying us that the agreement is now in fact. Yeah. Here we go. We'll see. Cheers. So you can go right up to the finish here. All right. Up here. Okay. Right to the front. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good night. Feel free to say yeah. You can go right up to the table. Oh yeah. I can see that. Oh there we go. Hello. One job. Yeah. Oh yeah. Whole group. Yeah. Uh, 
Gareth will help you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Gareth. Yeah, so just grab it. Yeah, yeah. no, it no, no, no. You can bring a chair up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah everybody. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll stay in the back. But, uh, so, yeah, so, uh, Council, this is the uh, group of Masters of Planning students that have uh, done uh, a great project this year on the Tancook Burial Wharf. They are going to do introductions as part of the presentation, so I won't, I won't do that now. Um, so I will just turn it over to, uh, to the students. They, they do an excellent presentation. I was in Halifax last week to see their class presentation, and so this is the next uh, iteration. So, so Gareth can tell you just how complicated and controversial planning can be. <laughs> <laughs> you may want to reconsider <laughs> the switch to a different course. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a been, simple way. It's been eye opening, that's for sure. Anyway, the floor is yours. Whoever's in charge of uh, great, yeah. Um, thank you very much for, for having us. Um, and yeah, as, as uh, Garth said, we're just here to. Uh, to present uh, on our project we've been working on for the last couple of months uh, in partnership with the municipality uh, titled Reimagine Ferry Wharf. Um, thank you. <laughs> Next slide. Yeah. Um, so just quickly we'll be going over uh, background to who we are, um, give some, some context and background for our project, um, go over our goals and objectives just very quickly and some of our process and background research before getting into the meat of what we sort of did which was a public engagement uh, in, in town here. Um, about a month ago or six weeks ago ish. I think um, I mentioned when I did my interview that it was not a tank. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we're producing a what we heard report, um, and then we'll just kind of go over some of uh, the recommendations that have come out of that. Um, so, who are we? We are Boardwalk Studios. It's the name we've given ourselves. We're six master planning students uh, at Dalhousie University in their master planning program. Um, and this is what's called our integrated team project, sort of our capstone project, our last big group project before we get our degrees. Um, so, um, my name is Michael, um, and the other folks with me here today are uh, Juziana, Melanie, Yava, Meredith, and Arnold. Much to see, so. <laughs> Thanks again for having us. And uh, yeah, we've been working as uh, as I just said with, with Garth as well as with Emily Staten on this project. So uh, we've been looking at the Tancook Island Ferry Wharf uh, in the heart of the village uh, here, um, with the understanding that eventually I know that this has been pushed back just recently, but eventually they're planning to move the ferry to Blandford, and so we'll no longer be using this space in the, in the heart of the village which opens up the potential for some other uses and some opportunities. Um, principle among which are the reuse of the spaces, potentially public space with maybe some activities or programming in the, in the area or um, on the wharf and in the adjacent um, sort of strip of land there, um, as well as providing public access to the coast, which is actually quite limited, we've learned, in the village. Um, so the site itself is comprised of five um, parcels. Um, one is owned by the municipality, it's the one that's highlighted in blue. The other four are largely water lots and are, are owned by the province. Uh, for this project, we've sort of been running with the assumption that it would be divested to the municipality or, and that the municipality would be interested in it. Um, and so um, that's a big kind of assumption moving forward. With this so they generally offer quest first. Exactly, yeah. Um, so uh, currently, as you folks probably know, it's mostly used by the Tancook Island Ferry. Um, there are also some fishing businesses that, that uh, make use of the wharf and a tugboat service. And uh, we found out through engagement that there that people dock their, their private boats and as well uh, as recreational fish there. Um, but both like, those activities are technically not permitted, as you can see in the signs uh, that are on the wharf. Yeah. Um, so our project goal was to provide community informed uh, recommendations uh, to guide and guiding principles, sorry, for the future of the Tanya Island uh, Fair to Work. And to do that, we set ourselves four objectives. The first was to consider the local context, uh, including the history of uh, the area, uh, current plans, policies, and programming in the village. Uh, second was to review other wharf reuse examples um, from other municipalities um, through a placemaking lens. Uh, third was to understand how uh, the community in Chester values and, and envisions the site through engagement. That was again our biggest kind of the biggest part of this project. And then fourth was to create recommendations from that uh, for the future of the site. Um, so just very quickly, how we did this uh, was we did a bunch of background research, as like I said, into the history as well as the planning context. So looking at the land use bylaw, the uh, secondary planning strategy, and. Uh, 
wharf case studies. Um, and then we performed our public engagement uh, process, which included a survey um, and the in-person uh, public open house, um, before finally coming up with our recommendations to make this uh, final report and coming to chat with you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just next slide, I guess. So just very quickly for our background findings, as I said, we mostly um, reviewed the SPS and land use bylaw as well as uh, the trade and licensing bylaw. Um, the site is currently zoned waterfront, uh, but that's uh, said to be um, likely, or in the RFP they told us to sort of assume that it'd be um, zoned as open space in the future, or uh, sorry, parks and open space. Um, any modifications to the wharf itself would involve some complex uh, permitting and environmental assessments and other author authorizations as well. Um, next slide, please. And yeah, this project, uh, just very quickly, aligns uh, quite well with a number of the uh, objectives and uh, policies that are uh, in the Village of Chester's SPS. Um, the most significant are just highlighted here, so providing public uh, an open space to all groups and abilities, um, developing partnerships and acquiring properties to provide public access to the coast, as well as encouraging the placement of uh, uh, public art and enhancing and attracting visitors to the village. Uh, so now Melanie's just going to go over some of our case studies. Yeah. So Mike was just talking about the policy research that we did, and we also looked at case studies to before we conducted engagement. And so we worked with the planners at the municipality of Chester, so um, to figure out how we wanted to. Just go. can you guys see her in the back? Mm -hmm. Fine. Okay. Just I'll like, speak up a little. Because there's a mic. Well, there's a mic back there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Just wanted to I'm soft spoken. That's okay. Um, yeah. So we we developed a. Um, a way to look at case studies. So uh, working with the planners, we decided we're only going to be looking at municipally owned dwarfs um, in Atlantic Canada and smaller population centers. So this is why we ended up picking these three sites, the Eugene Wiesco Park in Bridgewater, Market Wharf in St. Andrews, and the Ritchie Wharf Park in Miramichi. Next slide, please. And by looking at these case studies, we developed some lessons. Uh, we learned that the best practice is to balance commercial and recreational fishing, usually by designating these activities in different parts of the wharf. Uh, we learned that it's important to incorporate community feedback when you're designing the wharf and designing programming. We also learned that uh, the best practice is to, to use existing park programming and have the wharf as a spillover space where people can leave the park program and kind of move to the wharf as, um, as something to do. Um, as you're probably well aware, it's important to note that owning a municipal wharf is expensive to maintain. It's not just construction um, costs, it's also the upkeep. So um, we, we wanted to. Several, so we do not. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so it's really important to take advantage of funding opportunities when you can. So the Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency and the New Building Canada Fund are are some sources that you may want to consider in the future. Next one. Um, so the second, the second major. Um, that contributed to our recommendations was feedback we got from engagement and how we analyzed that to like what we had reports. So for our engagement activities we had, we created a page on Chester's Voices and Choices platform which ended up having 433 visits. It was a page where uh, committee members could look at the project and what it's about and kind of also give their inputs on what they feel about the site. We also um, collected stakeholder interviews with three, sorry, six stakeholders, including the Tourism Development Association, local fishing businesses, and like the Chester Heritage and others. Then we had a survey that was opened and that had 85 responses, as well as the open house we did about six six weeks back, which had 30 attendants. Yes, please. So throughout the engagement, what we were really looking to get out of the um, community members was in terms of their idea of the strengths and state of the, of the site itself, what infrastructure activities or programming were missing in Chester as a whole, and which we could potentially use the site for, and as well as like what community would want 
to see at the start. Next one, please. So after like analyzing the data we got from like the stakeholder interview, the community open house engagement and um, the service, we were able to create six key teams that kind of summarize the feedback we got from community. Next slide. Right. Thank you. So the first team was fishing. People love to fish here. And so we had that current fishing initiative and past fishing heritage itself was very important and community members valued this very much here in Chester and it also kind of reflects the municipality's culture, the image of what it is and people wanted to keep that and have that going. So it was like, although recreational fishing was not, it's currently not allowed, but community members did hope that this was something that could be balanced out just so in a way that the work, the work remains a fishing work. And then the second thing, thank you, was on protecting public coastal access. So community members made it clear that the public coastal access and public spaces in Chester were like highly valued here, especially as most of the coastal spaces currently are like privately owned. So we had more in terms of like boating access, like boaters on the wharf and how we really like to get into the water as so, well like, as having provisions for people as well who do not have private boats to be able to explore the waters. Um, so our third key theme is to maintain the wharf's current character. Um, while respondents and community members are interested in, in adding new infrastructure and programming to the wharf, they want to make sure it's in a way where the existing wharf remains an existing wharf. Like Yago was saying with the fishing, that's something that still needs to be the, the first and foremost thing, that it is, it remains to be a wharf. Um, next one, please. Um, the fourth theme is to support community and tourism. Something that we heard a lot about what people currently like about the wharf is its location. We've learned that it's in a great location on the water, right by Pleasant Street where there's lots of local businesses and restaurants. So the community really saw it as a way to kind of connect the waterfront with the rest of Chester. And you know, we've already had a lot of interest from groups in terms of our stakeholder interviews. Um, and we heard that this is something that people would be willing to continue. Our fifth key theme is environmental resilience. Um, we heard from a lot of stakeholders and from our survey that people are concerned about the environment. We noticed when we went to the site that there is a bit of erosion currently happening there. Um, and so a lot of people mentioned that they would like to see this maintained and also to keep the, the wharf to be in use, there would potentially need to be more environmental stewardship and sustainability practices uh, put in. And our last theme is enhancing wharf infrastructure. Um, because of its great location, it's a great candidate for generating new public access within the municipality. Um, but the respondents have indicated because of the size of the wharf um, and also what's currently available, some things may have to be added to make it viable as a public space. So an example of this would be um, a public washroom, or I heard about adding ladders to allow more people to get up from their private boats. And so these six key themes really drove our recommendations. And so now we'll go into them. We ended up having 12, um, and we're gonna explain what each recommendation is and a little bit how it goes into the local context, our case studies analysis, and how it feeds into the six key themes. And I think Garth passed around our handout if you want a reminder of what the six key themes are as we're going through it. It'll be on the back of the sheet. So our first recommendation is to add infrastructure such as floating docks to increase the usable area of the wharf, facilitate further access to the water. This is very similar to what I was kind of just saying. There is limited space at the wharf to continue to allow the, the highest and best use. You may want to look into adding things like floating docks to facilitate more access. Um, next slide, please. Our second recommendation is to remove policies restricting recreational fishing. 
Um, this is because we know that recreational fishing is currently not allowed by the province, um, and it's something that we know the Chester residents and visitors want to continue to do, so we think that by allowing this as of right would protect communities that are already fishing there and also welcome more opportunity for more people to come and fish at the site. We don't restrict recreational fishing on any of our other wars, do we? Yeah. So. No, not, not the long river. Yeah. No. That's not really easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our third recommendation, something that's a little harder to do, is to incorporate coastal adaptation uh, and nature-based solutions to increase the climate resilience of the war. Uh, we noticed the, uh, soil erosion at the, at the site, as you can tell through these photos on the slide. And it's also something we heard uh, often during our community engagement. Next slide, please. Our fourth recommendation is to support economic and tourism opportunities. Through the case study analysis, we learned that uh, docking fees and operator fees are commonly used as a way for municipalities to get revenue from their wards. Uh, and we also heard in our engagement that there's no current uh, boat operators that um, that exists out the wharf, and it seems like there's this desire to to have tourism and also a chance for the residents to go and see Mahou Bay from the site. And uh, we also learned uh, that the commercial fishermen would like um, a formalized use of using the commercial space. Next slide, please. Uh, our fifth recommendation is to provide, just back slide, yeah, provide public washrooms on site or close to the wharf. And we know this is particularly important as there's only one public washroom. Uh, in the village. Next slide. Uh, our next recommendation is to enhance pedestrian comfort and active transportation, uh, active transportation access on and around the wharf. And so we did hear from the community that there's an emphasis on having <coughs> activity from the wharf to other sites of the village. So uh, it's not just at the wharf itself, but the consideration of how this, the wharf connects to its surrounding will need to be considered. So our seventh recommendation is to improve comfort and beauty at the wharf by incorporating design elements such as added greenery and banks. Uh, our case studies showcase many good examples of beautification strategies, and it is a, a good and easy way to attract more people together at the wharf. Our eighth recommendation is to add seasonal programming at the wharf and parking. Uh, throughout our engagement process, the majority of our survey respondents were in favor of seasonal programming at the wharf. And we have pictured here a fun trail run at St. Andrew's Wharf, just an example. Our ninth recommendation is to support with more input and involvement in the project as early in the process as possible. And we have learned throughout our research process and engagement that this, uh, the work is important to the local indigenous community. They have a since time memorial relationship with this site. They fish there. So this can be a good opportunity for indigenous reconciliation. As you can see in this Bridgewater example, the wharf has a Mi'kmaq name, and we have also this interpretive panel explaining the region of the place and the name. Did you meet with the Mi'kmaq community? No. 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 Yeah. Um, our tenth recommendation was to work with stakeholders such as the, the Chester Municipal Heritage Society to determine how best to incorporate Chester's history at the war. Um, something that we all really enjoyed about this project was just how much um, Chester community members want to be involved with the future of the war, um, uh, including, for example, the Chester Municipal Heritage Society. And we also heard through our engagement that people are really interested in showcasing a lot of Chester's history and various aspects of the culture at the war. Our 11th recommendation is to allow vendors to operate on the wharf through amendments to the vendor licensing bylaw. Uh, we heard a lot of interest in having some sorts of um, you know, vendor activities, like maybe an ice cream cart, uh, for example, at the wharf. But currently, the trade and licensing bylaw only allows vending in commercial zones, which this wharf is not currently under. Um, next slide, please. 
And our twelfth and final recommendation was to designate some flexible space on the wharf for uses such as performances, markets, uh, and small-scale food vendor carts, like I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so during our engagement, we did hear that people are interested in these types of activities and having, you know, the sort of um, cultural programming at the wharf. But because the overarching theme was that they want to maintain the current character as a fishing wharf and. Uh, um, you know, they really want to preserve how it is right now. We felt that flexible spaces was a good way to kind of do both things at the same time. Uh, and that was, those are our recommendations. Thank you for having us. And if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Thank you for your presentation and all the time and effort you put into the project. Thank you. Uh, now I'll acknowledge uh, and ask any questions as we go on. Anybody have questions or anything they want to add? I, I think it's a close order here. I don't have a question. I just wanted to compliment you on what you've done and thank you. I think it's a, something I've been advocating for my short time on council that we have to deal with it if this is going to happen. And you've got a Kickstarter. I think mm -hmm. that's great and I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, nothing in here that I don't immediately, immediately disagree with. I think you've done a nice job. But I think the community consultation is an important element going forward. And, uh, I was impressed you had so many people turn out for yours, so mm -hmm. just, just uh, I hope we get an A on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we only, we usually only get a lot of people show up when they don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, I always look for and uh, I know you look at this as a, I guess in municipal work, was there we look at it, okay, do there any consideration at all in even community work? Because, and I'm saying this because there's a lot of funding available for the community takes a war. And it's to do the same thing as the community work, is this, but I mm -hmm. guess you just look at it as a municipal project based on that. Yeah. Did you hear anything from the community that they would be even interested in us not owning it, but them owning it? Um, I think generally it was the other way around. People were really worried that it would fall into private hands and were really hoping that the municipality wanted us to make sure. Yeah, <laughs> especially because the, the public access is so limited. They really see it as a valuable opportunity and they don't want to miss out on that. Mm -hmm. And I did, um, there was a community member who was also like strongly concerned about it have, having it owned by the municipality rather than the community. It says that if it was probably owned by the community, it, it might end up in private hands simply because they might not be able to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And they really want the work there as part of the, like the municipality. And so if the municipality owned it, it would be better managed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I'm not surprised. Just to Floyd's point, and, and to your point, I, I, I think that if there was a private or a, a group that wanted it, I mean, obviously, <clears throat> you know, lease it to them forever. It would, I don't think it would, it, there would be any chance of it falling out of the municipal hands. If we had a community group take it over and they just did disband, it would, you know, you could write something fall back down. Fall back down, say, anyway, like, we, like we do with every, yeah. with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Anyone else? Good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great Thank job. You. Thank you again for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we get an A-plus. When's the end of your school year? We're almost there. This will be our last week. Um, this is your last I think week? we're all done next week, right? Yeah, yeah. Our, last, yeah. All, our last assignments are next Thursday. Yeah. Or Friday, yeah. Did you already all graduate? We'll graduate well, today. Yeah. 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 We get it in the real world now. Yeah. <laughs> We're all excited and nervous about it. But <laughs> more excited than nervous. Yeah. Next thing you know, you'll be working here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. You want some clarification on daily play? Yeah, yes, yeah.
consultation requested a month to fly the flag. The policy is two weeks, so I'm just wondering if you want to take two weeks. Two weeks, that's our policy. Two weeks, that's our policy. Okay, great. Thank you. 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 Okay, 10.3, letter from Lynn Summers on behalf of Stephanie Smith, read library funding review committee update. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure if Tara was going to need this, but I, again, my notes are at home, but uh, really just high level. Uh, certainly we're aware that there's a library review committee happening at Social Public Library. We've been um, aware that this was in the works for probably six or eight months at least, because I know that they reached out to us to have a representative from our social public library board to sit on the review committee, and we do have that representative. I believe the meeting is going to be this week or next week, the first meeting. It does say in uh, Ms. Summer's letter that April 24th, so we're in April 24th right now this month. Uh, the process is one of, and I spoke to the chair of the library board earlier this week to get ready for my committee report. So the process is certainly one of um, extensive engagement. It's not something that's probably going to be a quick uh, lens, review, ticket blue, things like that, but very much, very much strong engagement around the representation that you see listed in the note, including the municipal units in Nova Scotia. And I don't know if that will be all of us, um, uh, you know, some of us, uh, regionally and so on, but again, we'll be there at the table, at least through the Public Library Board Rep. It's no, it's no secret that Social Public Library, this regional library, is very healthy, and that we are very fortunate to have had the ongoing support of our municipal units in all of Windsor, Queens. Uh, we did uh, two or three or four years ago when they were proposing the increase, we stepped up that year in advance when it was required, as did a couple other municipal units, not all. They weren't in financial position to do so. But I do know as well that when, for example, in the town of Lunenburg, when we were looking at really a need, there was a gap in, in requiring some additional hours at that library location, bricks and mortar, not the bookmobile or anything like that, the town of Lunenburg in that case stepped up and sponsored that particular piece of the budget. So again, each of the municipal units are very have been very good to the regional library over and above maybe what's even mandated. So I just want to speak to that. I don't know, Tara. I was kind of surprised. I mean, I was okay with this coming out like that, but I was kind of surprised. But not, you know, I came through the list early. That's the way it works. So. I don't know if you want to speak to it. Better yeah, than no, it was, it's just informing council that, that they are looking at the funding model yeah. and yeah. Um, yeah. a little more once they, they once they come up with a recommendation. Yeah. That all applies in the what we all know that. So oh yeah, well that. that's it. And I know that the public library is supportive mm -hmm. of other libraries and mm -hmm. recognize the struggle that they are having because we believe in the library service, not just in obviously this area, but across the province. So it is it is um, it is upsetting to know that some libraries are in uh, a bit of a financial crunch, um, but no, we I, I don't I think that the book would be able to even hinted at um, being removed for any extensive thing. Um, we'd be kicking and screaming. Yeah. yeah. Really. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. So, what are we in resolution? <coughs> <laughs> Morning, Council. Uh, so, the first uh, borrowing resolution we have for you today is the uh, basically it's an annual update to allow us to maintain our six hundred thousand dollar credit facility with Scotia Bank. Uh, it's there's there's nothing really new or exciting about it. It's just uh, something we have to provide them each year. Unless there's any questions. Motion from us. Yeah, just need a motion to approve this resolution and then. Um, so moved. Second, sir. I just like to ask a question. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, how are the interest rates at the bank uh, affecting anything that we do? So, interest rates, uh, as they affect us, are more on the side of what we earn in deposit interest. Okay. Um, this is a credit facility that yeah. exists, but doesn't really get used all that often. Okay. Or I, have, I have not seen it used yet. I haven't used it okay. yet. 
Uh, it sits there available for us if we were to need it. And then you, you, um, you would be subject to whatever the interest rate was. Yeah, and I, I okay. can't recall off the top of my head what the interest rate is, but um, yeah. fluctuating interest rates like the Bank of Canada announced me yesterday to stay flat, um, that impacts for us. It's more about our yeah. uh, interest earned on deposits rather than on, on the credit facility. Yeah. We'll be a second for the motion. I'll second it. Discussion. All those in favor. I like talking about money. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do the other one right we now? We might as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My next you know, it's a temporary, temporary borrowing resolution, yeah. So this is a, another temporary borrowing resolution. This one is in relation to the upcoming spring debenture issuance. Um, there are two items here that we're asking for approval for that uh, TBR. That is the uh, a truck purchased at the landfill and for the private road improvements for Shaw Island. Uh, of course, that one doesn't have a direct impact on us. That's they, they, it, they, yeah, they, exactly. They. Um, in addition to the two items here, there will be a couple other items in the debenture this fall or this spring, but uh, the other ones were all approved and in the fall and those resolutions are valid for 12 months. Uh, so for example, the financing of uh, landfill cell 3B would also be included. Um, and yeah, you'll have, um, I'll bring back another resolution to you within the next couple of weeks, which would be the pre-approval to borrow with subject to interest rates stuff yeah. that you're used to seeing. Eric, yeah, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Uh, page one of the report, Tim. How did you come up with the 610,000? Uh, that's the 525 plus 85, isn't it? You're making, making me second guess my math here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, eighty-five thousand for the truck, and then five twenty-five for the. Rent was so small. I thought five was a dollar sign. Oh, <laughs> and, and to be honest, that number will be much smaller. That was just the maximum amount that uh, we had approved as their budget. Um, many of the owners of Shaw Island have just paid their share up front, so we'll only be borrowing a small portion. Five was a dollar sign. If you had a dollar sign on the top one, you'd never been problem. Yeah, generally that's how I would do it. With the numbers, dollar sign at the top and the bottom, without them in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Okay, so we want to approve that. I uh, second the PBR for the heavy equipment truck and the private road. Derek second the dairy garden discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Motions carry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, appointment of building official. Yeah, should have brought him in. Congratulating. <laughs> yeah, I think he's out on the road uh, this morning. Doing it, doing it, doing it in the uh, Yeah, so it, it, it is a congratulatory uh, uh, opportunity for our building official, uh, Jeffrey Langell. So he has uh, been successful in uh, attaining his residential building official qualification. So it's a, a great step, and that's the, the whole idea behind uh, our building official trainee program was to have folks go uh, be hired and go through the training and then uh, successfully attain their qualifications. So, um, of course, a big piece of that is, is going out on the road and kind of uh, using Brent as a, as a mentor and our, our, uh, as our in-house uh, qualified official and, uh, and to get out and to do those site inspections. So, uh, so the site inspections are done, the courses are all done, and, and uh, <coughs> allow Jeff to, to receive this qualification. So, uh, so uh, they have kind of listed there uh, the, um, the types of inspections that he will, he will be able to carry out, uh, which is pretty fantastic because what, what happens is that will uh, allow some of those projects to be uh, inspected now by Jeff on his own as opposed to you know going out in, in tandem with another official and of course then that will obviously free up Brent's time to look after some of the other projects so uh, yeah so it's a really really good 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 point uh, but before uh, Jeff goes out and does any official inspections on behalf of the municipality that's required to be uh, appointed by council so that's, uh, that's the motion to appoint Jeffrey Langell as a building official for the municipality of Chester second or second discussion so we put on um that's correct. Uh, do you know if Jeff uh, has intentions to carry on to level one and maybe level two? Yes, he does. He, he fully intends. And so uh, we're doing that uh, already. And in fact, he already has all of his courses completed for the level one. Uh, he just has the required, uh, I believe it's 120 inspections that are required. And so, uh, so it does take a little bit of time just based on the number of projects that we have in the municipality. So one of the things that we're thinking of, uh, both for uh, level one and then, and then as well as level two, we don't have a lot of level two buildings in the municipality of Chester. That's true. Uh, 
Uh, so one of the things that uh, we're going to be looking into is, is potentially partnering with some of our neighboring municipalities uh, to see if we're yeah, able to go out and, and to do uh, do some inspections and have some mentoring happen uh, from from our neighboring municipalities as well, just to, to get to make, move through that process a little bit uh, a little bit quicker. But I, I anticipate in the coming ten years we will get more level two buildings because yeah. we're going to be allowing more multi-unit stuff in the outer areas, and yeah. that'll drive the need. Yeah. For that type of inspection yeah. work. Absolutely. So that's really good to hear. And then the other uh, people in the pipeline, how are they come along? Uh, excellent. Uh, so uh, Jared Stevens is our, is our other building official trainee, and he just has uh, one more course to go, and then he will. He already has his uh, required inspections completed, uh, so he will be uh, attaining his residential qualification uh, very soon as well, as soon as he's able to get that last course in. And, uh, and then he's essentially uh, indicated that he's interested in, in continuing the same path as well, so moving along to the, the level one and then uh, potentially the level two as well. And so that's all uh, part of the plan of uh, kind of thinking about uh, French retirement in the not too distant future uh, that hopefully we'll be able to uh, have them in and, and have them all <laughs> you know, I'm, retired. So, I'm so glad that, uh, you know, looking back, we were in a panic mode a year and a half ago and we didn't jump and make a decision to contract it out and, you know, that was one of the options. I'm just, I'm just glad that we, we were able to, this, this was the right thing to do. And it's, and it's actually working out so so far so yeah so far so good yeah any discussion on the motion all those in favor oh the motion's carried thank you good mark is working for me well they're both um, for the community yep. so they have a best of interest mm -hmm. corporate strategic management economic development sponsor sheet share update Morning, Council. Uh, so this is uh, just an information update for everybody. It's the last informational update on the grants and sponsorships from the economic, the economic development sponsorship update for 2023-24. Uh, it's just the full list of all the sponsorships that were given out in the fiscal year are listed at the bottom, but it's to inform everybody of the final one that was given out, which was to Aspatog and Ridge Golf Club uh, at the end of this, uh, this season. Uh, so we provided $1,500 to Aspatog and Ridge Golf Course for our logo and sponsorship to be for the entire season at the Aspatog and Ridge. So, We've also met with them over the last few days to discuss as well some activation at the site uh, throughout the year with their mobile ambassador once they're hired. Uh, so, so this is just an informational update for everybody and we're already starting on 24-25 so you should have a few more of these in the coming weeks as well for, for the, the new year. So any, any questions or that? Thank you very much. Floyd, I'm on to you and your illegal signs. Yes. We heard from Shawnee, Chef Patrick Sex, who we discussed a little bit at our building for They're on the light pole. Now, I don't know if it was a question or a good or not, but I know that our building were on slightly by law enforcement. What did Toby convince, I think, that they were uh, in the area that we controlled, but I am convinced they are. So I'm just going to ask someone to back me with an answer because there's now four signs there. In my opinion, they're illegal and they're just going to multiply and we don't get one of them. And they're on poles, white poles, and telephone poles. Well, they're not even allowed to do that. No, no, I know they're not. So I, I just need them removed as soon as possible. More people are going to be putting them in. Gary? Mm -hmm. I raised the question of illegal signs for the last couple of years and we're always told somebody has to complain. I thought when we complain, nothing happened, but nothing happened. From all over the village of Chester, we got, you know, the stain your house, we'll paint your house, we'll do this for you. Yeah. Uh, totally illegal signs, but we ignore them. So what I think we need to do, if we're going to do it down there, I think we need to do it all over the place. I don't do that at all, but I just know that we did make this area in particular. Well, this is our parking spot. No, 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 it's our area at exit six. Oh, yes. So we so made the illegal sign. It's, yeah. that, it's that controlled area mm -hmm. that we do have a bottom on place for. I, I just oh, this is a slightly different. Well, we're a lot of Chester for signs as well. Somewhat different than this. They are. So they just violation, yes. They're illegal. They're different, but they're real. They're not. And yeah, I'm not stupid, they're illegal. So I just think we need to take a look at it. Yeah. All over. Especially just go down uh, 
Chambers Cove Road, they got a whole variety of signs on the poles down there. So they'll get back on this one and we'll have to deal with the yeah. broader issue. I'm just going to try to stop and determine yes, they're illegal or no, they're not, or no, they're not, and we'll have to deal with it. Yeah, because the poles are the poles, no discussion power, and they're not allowed to put signs on it. Yeah, so they, but they don't they enforce it. Course. But people do everywhere. Oh, in Long oh, District, you see more and more going up on the light poles because it's, I guess, easy. Yeah. We control it in the the area. I guess it's six through the universe signage. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There are some land use bylaw regulations on off premise signage, so we would need to take a look at those. Yeah. And generally, you're right. We do we do do the land use bylaw violate most bylaw violations by complaint. Um, so so we can take a look at that. Right. Thank you. Consider this as two complaints. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I have one question about the signage. So when, when we encounter illegal signs, what action do we take exactly? Like, so I'm I'm not as familiar with how we've handled them in the past with, in the village. I I think um, unless it's been a, a particular issue with larger signs, we haven't dealt with it in the village um, to to any great degree. But with the uniform signage bylaw. Um, we went and removed those signs because it was part of our bigger program for uniform signage. So we went and removed those signs. So we don't contact the people putting the signs, we just take them away? Uh, we took the signs away and then, con I think we gave them a, a period to remove the signs, take them away themselves, and then we took them away. Because and they, they knew yeah. that, that we would have them. And we they had the opportunity. Them. So yeah. we keep them, we contact the business. Yeah. Because it usually has a phone number on it. Uh, we contact them, we keep it. Uh, if they want the sign back, they can come and retrieve the sign, uh, or we will dispose of it if they request it. So, if we had an unsightly property that was, you know, that was against the law, as we have set it up, and we had to take, invest our own time and effort to clean it up, we would bill them for that. Yes. But when they put up a sign and we tell them your sign's illegal, take it down, and they don't take it down, we just take it down for free. That's what we've been doing. Yes. Yeah. That doesn't seem like that might not be effective enough. I agree. No. Mm -hmm. To me, if you are told you put it up illegally and you don't come get it, the beauty of that sign is that you know how to get a hold of them. <laughs> they can they can pay the fine. Well, we can review our signage by law, but it's just another thing. I think we need to review our enforcement of our bylaw. Yeah, to me, it's a bylaw. It's, it's just by it. I mean, if you, if you do something illegal, you get fine. Yeah, I know. I I actually called one person on the first one. I had not him and told him they had a sign there. So they weren't in the area. So I said, I'm not sure if you realize there's a bylaw there. But I said uh, it was not down seven days. I said I'll report it to the council, and they'll take it down. And they said they take it down two days. They didn't. So I think we just call the person, my understanding is we just call them and give them a paper down or something. If they don't, we do it, and I don't disagree with you. They're not allowed there. So why are we spending the time and money to do it? Call them up, take them off on two days, and be fine. That's simple. That's, that's not my book. So I think it would be more effective. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's it for the agenda. Now it's been suggested to me that. Uh, you guys came back in. Is there a specific reason? No, just want to come see it. <laughs> okay. Just it's been suggested to me that uh, that uh, we make a motion to go in camera, because that is our next item, and then take a short break while they get all that stuff set. Discussion. All those in favor? Oh, those carried. And we're on the.